Observable is different from vanilla JavaScript because it organizes code and data into cells that it reruns automatically as needed. You can think of this as working like a spreadsheet. Observable knows which cells depend on which others, no matter where they are located in a notebook. So when one of them changes, all values that depend on it are automatically updated. This is also efficient. Only those cells that are affected by a change need to be rerun. That means you can organize cells in your notebook however you want, without worrying about how the order of operations may be affected. The value cell here is used in two other cells, one before and one after it in the notebook. Whenever I change its value by moving the slider, both dependent cells will update. We can see how this works by looking at the minimap. I open it by clicking the minimap button in the sidebar on the right and then clicking the cell named value inside of it. We can now see the value cell highlighted and lines linked to cells that depend on it. This reads left to right. The cell that we selected has a dot towards the left and cells that depend on it have a dot on the right. Let's add more cells to see what this might look like. In this somewhat contrived example, double squared plus depends on the double squared and value cells, with double squared depending on double and squared. The minimap shows us one level up and down from double squared when I click on it and indicates that there are more dependencies upstream of doubled and squared. I can follow them by clicking on those cells. The minimap also provides another way of reordering cells in a notebook. I can click on a cell in the minimap and then drag it up or down to move it to a new position in my notebook. This is helpful when I want to move cells over a longer distance, for example, to move them into an appendix. Reactive code might seem unusual at first, and it's best understood by just trying it out. Once you're used to this way of working, you will likely miss it in other environments. Not having to worry about the order in which values are defined, and not having to rerun computations when things change, eliminates many sources of bugs and lets you build much more readable and better structured code. The reactive model also gives you more control over how your code is organized and presented. In longer notebooks, it is common to move computations, data preparation, and so on into an appendix at the end of the notebook, without having to call all those data prep functions before creating the charts or running an analysis. Next, let's look at how Observable's reactive data flow works with user inputs and interactivity.